Yeah, he sure is not very happy about the very cold weather. But it did crank up finally and it's halfway running anyway. This is going to be my new no prep tires. I'm going to try this Hoosier bracket radial. And boy, uh, it looks pretty doggone nice. It feels really good. It's really cold outside. But it feels nice and soft. I can't remember, but check this out. This right here, I think, is the, the ticket. That soft sidewall should it get stiffer when it goes there. We're going to compare it to the ones that are on the car. The <laughs> Okay, so we just got this thing pushed in here. Got Keith in here hanging out tonight. Um, so what we're doing tonight, couple things. So you saw those bad to the bone Hoosier radials. So these are going on the car. So these things, now that they've been inside a little bit there, they feel like they got traction just sitting there. I guess that's, they got 100% traction right now. They ain't spinning a lick. That is the, the most that thing's probably ever going to look. <laughs> I'm gonna put the black wall out on mine, the black letter instead of the white letter. These things are nice and soft. We're gonna weigh them and stuff against the the pro bracket radials. We'll We're gonna do a couple changes tonight. I was talking to one of my buddies on the phone the other day, uh, Junior uh, Bissett with Bissett Performance, and we were talking about weight, and I told him how much weight I had in the back of the car, and he said he's had really good luck by putting weight on the rear end housing. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. And it makes sense. It's sprung weight versus unsprung weight. So sprung weight means the spring is carrying the weight. Unsprung means the spring is not. So it's just that simple. So uh, I'll have the same bias that I had before. Um, but it'll be the shocks and the springs won't have to work against the weight. And I can hopefully loosen the shocks up some. The other thing I'm gonna do since these Hoosiers are going on it, they, they're a little softer. I'm gonna try to treat it similar to a slick. I have been Facebook and YouTube stalking every no prep racer out there. And I've talked to a couple folks and they gave me some good advice. Uh, Billy the Kid and there's a couple other ones. They're all coming to 710 too though, but everybody was you know super helpful. And uh, so I'm gonna make a few changes. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to treat that bracket radio like a slick. So I'm gonna put 40 pounds on the rear end housing. No, I'm sorry, I'm gonna put 80 pounds on the rear end housing and uh, take you know about 100 pounds out of the trunk and then uh, that's gonna jack the car back up. Then everything I showed in my previous video that I done with the anti-squat, I'm gonna replot everything and something's gonna move tonight. So I'm gonna try to get the anti-squat down to where somewhere between 110, 120%. Uh, I don't want the, the, the tire, I don't want it to separate. I want it to basically stay neutral. It looks like that's what a lot of them are. Some of them are squatting, and so they're in the negative anti-squat. But the problem is, is with mine, I don't have enough room to actually get it to squat. So I just want it to stay neutral. A lot of them stay neutral. So that's why I'm going I'm to go. Uh, my goal is is to get it to stay neutral. So somewhere between 100% is theoretically the right number. But I'm going to go, like I said, 110 to 120% is what my goal is going to be. That number is probably skewed a little bit because, you know, everything changes. And it's just a guess when you put it in the calculator. But um, so that's that's the goal. So most likely uh, the stuff that can move on mine, I can move the lower bar down in the front of the hole. And I can move the lower bar down quite a bit on the rear end housing or up is in this case is what it would do. Um, or I can move the upper bars up on the the uh the body of the car but uh, i think what i'm gonna do is i think the way i want to try it i want to keep the angle on the upper bars and i'm going to lower no i'm going to raise the lower control arm on the rear end probably an inch or inch and a half i think those holes are three quarters of an inch apart whatever it is it's going to go up probably two holes and then that's going to put the lower control arm slightly pointing downhill so the instant center point should be longer, and our squat should be less, and it should be pretty low by making that lower control arm face downhill from the back of the car to the front. So let's see what we're gonna do there. And then the other thing we're gonna do, this is how I'm gonna actually mount the weight on the car. Um, this is one inch, I'm gonna use one inch uh, plates. This is gonna, I'm gonna cut that head off, I'm gonna slide it down in there 
I'm gonna drill some holes here. I'm gonna rosebud weld it and then weld it real good on the top. And then this is gonna weld to the, the rear end housing down there. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here you can see we got, we got the two batteries back here. These things weigh 75 pounds a piece. And then I've also got these uh, plates, 125 pounds. So I'm gonna take that entire 125 pounds out right now. And uh, I may end up, now I'm gonna leave 25 in there because I know what I scale at. And then that'll be pretty close, I think. It'll, well, no, I might need to leave 50 in it. No, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take it all out with 25. Let's get it all out with 25. Okay, so we decided to just keep one down there. So one it is, so it is on here. So we're gonna put a trunk back on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and loosen the shocks up because the shocks are pretty tight now. So I got to get ride height for where I want it. And then where ride height is, you know, honestly, it's not terribly high now. Um, maybe I need to, that might be the good ride height. And jack up the front. Front's got to come up some as well. So, oh yeah, we looking like a four wheel drive now. Um, but if you notice, I don't know if anybody's ever noticed or not, I cut my lip where the normal part is like this. It was up there, so I actually cut that off so I could lower it. I did that a long time ago. And so if that lip was there, I mean, that right there would be like a, actually a pretty decent ride height, honestly. I mean, it looks kind of butchered up, but if you didn't, if you don't look for it, you don't ever notice. It's a good way to camouflage and get you a little bit more tire clearance if you need it, if you're not scared to cut up your car. If you're scared to cut up your car, I wouldn't do it. Okay, so what I'm doing up under here right now, I'm gonna come in here and uh, loosen the shocks up. You can see I've got these QA1 shocks. So I'm gonna just loosen them up and that way they're not so, so tight because in a no prep world or any track that is real bumpy, if the track, if the shocks are too tight, the tire will basketball. And so instead of the the suspension working, the tire will start bouncing, especially on a radial. And then it'll just, you know, upset the car. And then it'll start bouncing and it'll spin and the shock's not moving. So I think in a no prep world, um, shocks need to be looser. And then with the shocks looser, it allows it to, the shock to actually work and not the tire to bounce as much is what it looks like from what I can tell. So um, the other thing you can see in here real good is my adjustability on my lower control arm. Yes, everything is nice and rusted, but you can see it's kind of hard to tell with the camera angle, but it is going uphill for sure. And whoa, camera just went haywire. So it is going uphill for sure. So I'm gonna measure these. I'm gonna probably end up going right here. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna get myself in the car and then I'm gonna get Keith or Brian to jump under here and measure and see where we're at on the the heights for the anti squat. And then I'm gonna have to enter it in the calculator. And you see up here on the upper, there again, it's hard to see. That looks like it's flat in the camera, but it's not. It's going, it's going downhill pretty good it's probably going down two inches i would say and that is very deceiving looking at it in the in the camera by raising it on this this bracket here and i, I do have it on oh i see what it is i've got it on wide angle view and that's why it's distorting everything as far as the angles but i needed to put it there so because it's kind of hard to see because i'm having to get pretty close to it so um when i go here it's going to be flat maybe maybe going downhill and looking at the shock the other thing you got to look at so with the shock the way i was running it with a radial this is perfect maybe a little a little high but what will happen now is if this this ain't squats any at all then there's no room for that arm to go down in the body so what i'm gonna have to do you can see this is screwed up it's not very far up on the on the uh, shock arm on the body so I'm gonna have to move it back down a hole on this thing, on the bracket. It's gonna have to move back down here. So I'll go back down. You see, that's where it was before. 
And then what I'll do is I'll run this up the body to get the ride height back where I want it. That's the first thing I need to do. I want to get, that shock has a lot of travel. So I'm gonna get it, um, you know, I might, no. Nah. Yeah, one hole should be enough. I'm gonna move it down one hole and then we'll go from there, see what happens. Okay, so I got this stuff calculated out, measured it all out. You measure all the pickup points. So from the center of the bolt to the ground, that's what you're gonna measure. And you're gonna do that for all the pickup points. And you gotta also measure the length of the control arms. That's something to think about when you're measuring the uppers. It's not necessarily from, from this bolt to the next bolt, it's if it was straight. So you have to calculate that properly. So this is what we got. So right now, this is the, the measurements, upper control arms, lower control arms, and you see what everything calculates out to be. And I squat 170%. Instant center length, 30.5 inches. And instant center height is 9.81 inches. So in order to get it at 120, 130, like I said, this is what I'm gonna have to do. So the upper bars are gonna stay the same. I'm gonna move the lower control arm on this bracket. And you can see, I've got all this adjustability. So each one of these holes is three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna go up three holes. So it's gonna be right here. So when I go up three holes, when you put it back in the calculator, you can see it goes up from seven inches to nine and a quarter. It's a big jump. But now that lower bar is pointing downhill slightly. And then that gives me this number. And I squat 117%. Instant center length, 37.7, and the height is 8.26. So that should, the car should not try to really do much of nothing. It should kind of hang out where it's at. It shouldn't hit the tire super hard. It shouldn't try to plant the tire really hard. I've got the shock settings now. Um, they've got 19 clicks each, so I've got them on eight. So, I mean, they're, you know, a little bit softer than 50-50. And the car will move a little bit. We got the anti-roll bar set again. Um, we did move this down a hole. And you can see now the, the shock is out of the body about probably three inches. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's, it's, it is out a good bit now before it bottoms out. So, it should be, you know, the shock should be in a good range. So the only thing I got left to do down here now is I'm gonna move these control arms real fast. And it really, since this thing, the body, all the weight is supported on this uh, coilover spring, uh, I should be able to just, usually, you just take that loose, take the bolt loose, take the nut off of it, and it slides out and the upper arm just, you know, pops up. Sometimes you have to tap it with a hammer because these the brackets bend a little bit occasionally. But um, other than that, we're going to go ahead and stick these up in the right spot. So if you notice my lower control arm, they are, the ends are all the way in the bar almost. There's not much adjustment. So the goal, you can see these holes are at a slight angle. They're supposed to be at the right arc so that if these are installed at the right angle, then you don't have to adjust the bar length. Mine are not. So apparently what happened on mine is this is just at the wrong angle. Not a big deal if you're usually only going one or two holes, but since I'm going drastically up, then it, it actually fit back here in these holes here. So um, instead of going up three holes, it was right here. So it's going up two and a half holes. So let me show you what that anti-squat is. So when you recalculate it, um, 8.875 is that number now instead of 9.25. And the anti squat's 128%, 36 inches long, and 8.6 inches high. So that's where we're gonna be. Okay, so we got the ride height set, the back is done. So one of the things, make sure you check when you're messing with it, if you have to do that. My brackets are not exactly on the right angle since it wasn't done on a jig. So I had to extend this lower control arm just a little bit. It was uh, less than a quarter inch off, so but it is correct now. So the rear end should track right. Put a little bit more travel in the front, jack the front end up a little bit. 
and everything on the chassis wise seems to be good. So now I'm about to weld these weights on. So what I'm gonna do, like I was saying, all right, I'll see you. Okay, so we got these done. So this is my, my weights, or well, the weight support. What I did is I cut the head off of that grade eight bolt, slid it in there, drilled holes in this first, and then Rosebud welded it. And that is gonna be the mount. So this is gonna mount to the rear end. And then these weights, you can see we got 80 pounds. That's gonna be on each one of these on each side of the rear end. So let's do that real fast. Okay guys, so here you go. This is the weight. We've got 42 and a half pounds on each side. I mean, it's pretty secure, but there is, I mean, it's weight hung off, you know, the rear end. It's welded to my support that I had across the bottom. So I've got some really good, strong beads on it. So hopefully, you know, those things stay secure. If it tire shakes, then it might, you know, possibly mess the welds up. Brian had a good point. You know, we probably need to take them apart. Luckily, I mean, it's just got one, one, that one bolt holding them on. So take them apart fairly frequently and, and check them. So the suspension is done tonight. So the suspension is done. So we're good to go here. The only thing I got left to do is change the tires. I've been over here for about five hours and so I'm, I'm pretty tired, but I'm gonna try to swap the tires out real fast. All right, guys, well, we're gonna be trying it out this weekend. Um, I'll send y'all some video, go fast, get some wind lights. Y'all please comment, like, and subscribe. Appreciate it, thanks, bye.